People come to me all the time and say, Mark, you know, is it time for me to buy a home? How do I know when it's time? What does that look like? Honestly, it's different for every person, right? If you're sick and tired of paying somebody else's rent, somebody else's mortgage, right? Then it's probably time. Are you financially stable in your job? Do you have a very good job that where you have consistent money coming in, a nice W-2 where you're on a salary or guaranteed a certain amount of hours per week if you're hourly. You know, all those things need to be set in place so you can take on the financial burden of a home, right? I'm not gonna sit here and paint a picture that, you know, as long as you can afford a mortgage, you should buy a house. No, because there's costs to home ownership. Besides just your mortgage, you're gonna have maintenance, you're gonna have like your water bill, your electrical bill, your gas, you're gonna have to like save money for long-term maintenance items like a roof, hot water heater, air conditioner. Those are all things that over time you're probably going to need to, re you're going to need to replace no matter what. And sometimes people don't take those things into consideration. Why? Because they've been a renter most of their life prior to this. So when they had an issue before, uh, the roof's leaking and somebody else came out and fixed it and somebody else paid for it. Now that you're a homeowner, you're gonna be calling yourself. Hey, self, go get 15 grand, you need a new roof. Right, like those all, there's no picking up the phone. The only person you're gonna be calling is calling your wife going, oh crap, we gotta buy a new hot water heater, honey. You know, those are the things that people don't take into consideration. Other small items that they don't think about is like, as simple as this sounds, does the house have wood trim? Is it painted? How long is that paint gonna last? Five years, eight years, whatever it is. Like that is a maintenance item. You're gonna have to get out there and scrape the paint off and repaint pieces of trim on your house. You're gonna have to pressure wash the dirt and grime and potentially some exterior mold off the back side of your house. Like you're gonna have to pressure wash your driveway if you want it to look good. You're gonna have to cut your grass. You're gonna have to put down pine straw. You're gonna have to put down wood chips. You're gonna have to trim your hedges. You're gonna have to clean your windows. You're gonna have to sweep the floor. You're gonna have to take the trash out. Like all of these things people like don't think about sometimes. Like, so you need to make sure you're mentally prepared that you don't get in over your head when you get into home ownership. Now, other things you need to think about potentially when it comes to this home ownership thing, especially here in Florida, along the beautiful Elmer Coast, we've had issues with insurance lately, right? So making sure that the house has a good roof, you have a good solid insurance company, and you've got a good hot water heater. Those three things are things that insurance company is looking for to make sure that the house is in good order. They also are gonna require that you have what they call a four point inspection done. When you purchase a house, they're gonna look at your roof, your HVAC, which is your air conditioner, your electrical and your plumbing, right? To make sure those four things are in good working order, especially if the home is over 30 years old. Those, that four point inspection is going to be required, okay? So making sure that that four point inspection is in good, work, all those items are in good working order is going to be needed in order to get your homeowner's insurance. The next thing you should think about when you're thinking about home ownership is, you're gonna to talk to a lender, they're gonna tell you what you are quote unquote pre-qualified for. This is a crucial part of the home buying process. Probably the most important in my mind because the lender says you're pre-qualified up to 700,000, right? Well, just because you're pre-qualified for 700,000 doesn't necessarily mean you as the buyer are going to like the payment of a $700,000 house. So the most important thing is that you look and see what you can afford, what you're comfortable with on a monthly basis. How much do you want your monthly payment to be? Okay? And then we reverse engineer out and figure out what price point we should be looking in. Because I don't wanna go show you $700,000 houses only to get a, have you fall in love with one, 
Then we go and get a closing cost estimate from your lender when they tell us how much your payment's gonna be and you go, oh, that's $2,000 a month more than I wanna spend. Well, we're not aligned here, right? Your expectation of monthly payment and purchase price are not aligned. So we have to reverse engineer, go off of what you want your payment to be, and then we figure out your price from there. But it's still crucial that you do talk to that lender because they have to issue what's called a pre-qualification letter. That pre-qualification letter can be up to that ceiling number that you like are qualified for, but I don't want that number. I want to know the number that we need to price point we need to be looking for homes in because you are comfortable with that monthly payment. And that will change over time. Like if you're looking this year versus what you looked, let's say you looked at houses last year versus this year, guess what? Your purchase price has changed. Why? Because of interest rates. You can now afford less than you could the last couple years. That's part of the challenge with buying a home or thinking about buying a home and then waiting, right? And then going, oh my gosh, the interest rates changed. What am I gonna do now? I can afford less home. Well, that's part of the game. So sometimes you're better off to just bite the bullet now and refinance later. Even if you're not 100% happy with that interest rate today, you could always refi later. The third thing you need to think about when you're looking to purchase a home is how long do you plan to live in that home, right? If you really are only gonna to plan to live there for one year, you may not be able to, to turn around and sell that property and not have to bring additional money to closing depending on how the appreciation is working in your particular market, right? So for example, around here, we try to tell people, hey, you probably need to plan on living in the home about three years in order to not have to bring money to closing based on your financial situation and market conditions, right? Usually within three years, that is about the minimum people wanna live in a home anyway. Like people are living in their home longer and longer these days. So if you find a situation where somebody's moving out after let's say a year, usually there's some sort of extreme family situation, some sort of an emergency in order for them to move that quickly. But most people are staying in their home seven plus years, right? People don't like to move. It's a pain in the neck. But if you have, you know, you're at the young married couple age and all of a sudden you have a small apartment, two bedroom apartment and Next thing you know, you got twins on the way. Well, guess what? You may have just bought that apartment last year, but now life has changed. That's one of those extreme situations where it may make sense to go ahead and sell within a year, right? To get planned for your next family addition, if you will. The reason a lot of people can't sell their home after one year is because of the closing costs that are involved, both on the buy side and the selling side. So when you purchase a home as you're a, and you're a buyer, you're looking at about 3% of the purchase price you're going to need to have for what they call closing costs. That's gonna be kind of some loan origination fees, your escrows, your insurance, and all the other fees that come with home buying. So you gotta have like 3% saved up. So if you buy a $300,000 house, your closing costs, not talking about your down payment, but your closing costs are gonna be around $9,000. Now, you turn around and you wanna sell less than a year later, your, your closing costs on the selling side are gonna be somewhere between eight and 10% typically, okay? So now all of a sudden you're paying eight to 10% on the selling side, well, guess what? Do you think you're gonna have enough equity to recoup the buying side closing costs and the selling side closing costs? No, typically you don't. That's why some people get in a situation where instead of selling the property, they'll turn around and rent it for a couple of years because they wanna try to recoup some of that money that they put in the initial closing costs. Or if you can't afford to, sell, to rent the property, you can turn around and sell it, but you may be in a situation where as a seller, you may have to bring money to closing on the day of closing 
if you're selling quickly and not being able to hold on to that property where you can really reap the appreciation over a couple years.